Hello, good morning. Welcome everybody. I thank you for having me, for asking me again. So I'm happy to be here, be in Dallas. I kept telling people this week, I won't be there on Sunday. I'm going to be in Dallas. I'm going to be, going to be with Dallas. Um, this, uh, this has been beautiful. I love your new place there. That's the first I've seen of the, the, the altar there and the, the beautiful painting and the flowers. And that's gorgeous. Really, that is just really lovely. It must be so nice for you guys to have that, to have that space. Now, how many people are there? <laughs> That's okay if it's just a few. I'm just wondering how, how is it a, a what size space it is? It's a cozy space, um, and it's we're calling it the Sangha House. Um, it's it's a That's wonderful. We are we are just starting to to use our community space here at the at Ananda Portland again as well. Um, we had a Thanksgiving gathering. There was a potluck, and they're talking about doing that for Christmas. I don't know if we're going to or not, but it's just again like all of us. It's just starting to come back together again where people feel comfortable doing that. So congratulations. That's wonderful for you all. Um, I was told I, you know, could talk about anything, <laughs> which, um, but this reading, I really love this reading. This, um, it seems to me that this is the culmination of the year, even though I know that there's a couple more readings about the star of Bethlehem and the, anyway, there's, there's a couple more that Swami put in there, but this one living in the presence of God seems to me to be sort of the the pinnacle of the whole year. We've talked about all these other things and the Satan and how do devotees fall and how do they rise and how do they, you know, it, it's, there's all these pieces of the teachings that he has given us in this whole year long course of self-realization. And it's wonderful. Every, every year when I get to this part, I, I think, wow, you know, we've, we've been studying together for this entire year and learning all about self-realization. And we get to do it again next year. We get to dive into it again. And there's just more and more layers. But um, living in the presence of God, to, for me in my personal life right now, this just seems to be what it all comes to is recognizing that God is everywhere. And um, this, uh, the Gita, he says, he who beholds me everywhere and who beholds everything in me never loses sight of me, nor do I lose sight of him. That's, it's thrilling. Um, in the essence of the Bhagavad Gita, Swami comments on this passage and says, my guru very often quoted this last stanza. His tone of voice and his expression as he did so were blissful. He was reminding us that God is ever near. What seems to hold the Lord at a distance is only our indifference. And I, 
when I first heard that and repeatedly when I hear that, there's part of me that rebels and thinks, but I'm not indifferent. I'm a devotee. <laughs> my whole life is about searching for God. As with all of Ananda and my friends, to think of us ourselves as indifferent is, um, it doesn't seem right. But then think, okay, but if I wasn't indifferent, then I would be aware of God all the time because this is what he says. And I, I realized um, the other day I came out of the store again. I go to this local store. It's a Fred Meyer store, grocery store. And every time I go in there, I don't know if you have this experience, but okay. <laughs> Supriya wrote a note. Um, so every time I go to the store, I zone out. I go in and I do my shopping and I think about, oh, the prices are going up again. And I think about what I need. And I think about the people that I see there. And I, I worry about, you know, trying to get done in time. I always take longer than I think I'm going to take. I think about everything. I think about all kinds of stuff. I don't think about God. I don't keep my mind here. And I realize it as I'm walking out the door, I do my checkout, I have my bags, I have my receipt, and it's almost in the same spot as I walk out the door to my car. I think, where have I been the last hour or 30 minutes or however long? I've been completely other, someplace else. And I walk out the door and then I realize, thank you, master. Thank you, guru. Thank you, God. You know, and I tell myself next time I'm going to go, I'm not going to forget, I'm not going to zone out. And I try and almost always I come out the door and in that spot, I realize that my mind, I let my mind go somewhere else. And that's what indifference is. Indifference doesn't mean that, you know, we are completely um, indifferent to God all the time. It's it's allowing ourselves to get into a different place where um, it's just, it's not in our consciousness. It's not uppermost in our mind. And, and that's what indifference is. And I realize, yes, I am indifferent. Not all the time, but there are times that I am. And um, if, if you remember, there's a story from, from Swami where he talks about one of the, his fellow disciples I think it was um, the president of Mexico. I think it was Senor Caron. I think his name was. I can't pronounce his name right. Um, but he's, he tells a story that says that um, Yogananda said to him, I lost sight of you for a few lifetimes. And now I found you again, and I'll never lose sight of you again. And then the disciple every now and then would ask him, you promise, master, you won't lose sight of me. And master said, I know, I promised, I won't. And that passage for a long time, it was disturbing. <laughs> Some people find it really sweet, you know, that he would reassure him. But I think, wait a minute, how did he lose sight of him? How, you know, the guru-disciple relationship is supposed to be eternal and forever and and his job is to keep track of me you know <laughs> how how did he lose sight of this disciple for several lifetimes and i my heart would just i would just worry about this and think about it and um and then i realized this is what this passage is telling us and what swami says um, what seems to hold the Lord at a distance is our indifference. So it's not that the, that the guru really lost sight of this disciple, it's that the disciple went elsewhere. The disciple became indifferent in some way, some fashion, as karma took him in other places, into other things, into other pursuits, desires, likes and dislikes, everything. And then 
that's what causes this, this distance between us is our indifference, our, um, you know, wandering into another, into another place. And, um, but, you know, uh, Krishna here, sorry, Krishna is reminding us and telling us that if, if you behold me everywhere, if you take it, if we make the effort and we try to see God everywhere, then we'll never lose sight of God, nor do I lose sight of him. That's the promise. And I, and I, I believe that's what, um, that's what Master was telling this disciple, is that you're now on the right track. You now have me in your consciousness. And now we're, we're together again, and that won't change. And that, of course, is reassuring and wonderful. But I, I, just, um, I just couldn't figure out how Master could lose sight of him. And I, and I don't, and I also, I don't believe that there's really this um, sense of where is he, <laughs> you know, where did my disciple go, you know, it's actually lost. It's, it's that connection, it's that living connection that we feel all the time that gets, there's a distance there that happens sometimes. And in, um, there's another quote from, from Master that I was just happened to read yesterday that I love. And he says, um, the yogic ideal is to practice meditation and to lead a life of self-discipline, service, and active kindness to all. That's why you must um, purify your body and mind by right living and kind thoughts. Christ is being resurrected within you when you meditate and when you do good deeds and kindnesses. That's a lovely thought. Christ is being resurrected within us when we do good deeds and kindnesses. With every meditation, with every kindness and good action, the divine consciousness will permeate your being and you will know that God is always with you. So this tells me that, that our job is to continue to live this yogic life and to do the best we can, of course, always. But even in ways that seem to be small, good deeds and kindnesses, this helps the divine consciousness permeate our being. And we know that God is with us. And this is living practicing being in the presence of God all the time. It's letting that divine consciousness permeate us, inviting it by being in tune with our guru, being in tune with God, doing good things, doing everything we can to invite that presence all the time and not to be indifferent. And it's... Um, it's interesting to look at the lives of the saints that they, all of them, any saint that you can choose of any path who has found that experience of God, they're not, um, they don't find God and are now in this sort of bubble of godness, of God realization that, that says, I'm, I'm separate from you. There's, there's a more, there's more union, there's more unity, there's more sharing of that consciousness, there's more awareness of that consciousness being everywhere. The saints look at us, common people who are trying to do this, and there's just the sense of, don't you see? We're swimming in God all the time. God is here behind every single person. And, um, and that's what you have to discover. And we hear that we hear that in these teachings from Swami, from Master all the time. For me personally, recently, it seems to be more of a um, more of a theme, more of an awareness that I'm that I'm having. That I need to be aware that every single person I look at, God is right there. God is there. 
I'm busy, I'm busy all the time doing things. In fact, I had a, a conversation with a, a good friend of mine the other day, and um, we had a little bit of a you know, different perspective because he thanked me for something that I did. And I, I said, you know, it's God helping God all the time. That's what master said, you know, God helping God. And he took a little exception to that. And he said, you know, I really like it if when I compliment you or when I thank you, that you accept it and that you take that would be, that would be, I, I would ask you to do that. And I said, sorry, <laughs> I can't because I'm fully accepting your gratitude, your appreciation, your friendship. I, I am not turning that away at all, but for me and my growth and my understanding, what I have to do is realize this is God acting through me all the time. And it is God that I'm serving all the time. Otherwise I get caught. I get caught in thinking it's me. And I get caught in thinking that all of these little tasks are things that I have to do. And if I, I have to constantly remind myself, is God helping God? that it is God flowing through me doing these things and that it's not me because that's, that's what I need to learn. And accepting uh, uh, your gratitude is one thing, but saying, yes, that was me that did it. No, that's it's not going to help me. That, that, that's not the direction I want to go. Um, and the other night I was, um, I was again, I was at the store and what I was doing is running some errands for some friends. It was about eight and nine o'clock at night. And I had several people here in the community that I was shopping for. And there was one man who recently slipped on the ice, broke his leg. Um, there was another woman who was really sick with, with bronchitis and, and, and just ready, you know, off and everything. And there was this other friend who is on hospice and I had to pick up a couple of things for him. So I'm, I'm at the checkout lane in the self-checkout. And I'm doing all these different transactions because I, I need to give each of them a receipt, you know, the, of what it is I'm getting. So I, I do one, you know, and get the receipt. Then I do another one receipt. And then I, um, and then the machine broke. <laughs> and so I, I was trying to get it to work again. And the cashier came over and helped me and nope. Oh, I broke the machine, I guess. So I had to get back in line. There was a long line of people and I didn't want to cut in front of somebody else who was trying to use one of the other machines. So I just said, it's okay. I'll just go back and get in line. And so I took my card because I didn't, hadn't finished everything yet. So I got back in line again and went through. And it, there was part of me that was thinking, why aren't you upset about this? This is really, this is an irritating um, now, circumstance here, it's late and you're tired and you've got these different things and these people are waiting for you to take these things and now the machine broke. But it was just, it, it, was, it was joyful. It was fun. And, um, and it was because what was uppermost in my mind was serving somebody else. I was not thinking about me. I was thinking about these other people that were all struggling with their karma and their stuff. And and I happened to be the one I, you know, master put me there and I was, it was, it was something that I needed to do and that I got to do for them. It was God helping God. And it was fine. It all, you know, I got home, distributed all my, all this stuff, but it's, it's God behind every person. And when I do find that I, I, I find myself starting to get irritated or impatient or you know, or something, I try to see and imagine, you know, God behind that person saying, Lorna, remember, this is me, remember? There's a story of, of St. Teresa of Avila, some of you may have heard, where she was in the, um, you know, in the monastery, in the convent, I guess it's the word, and they have these, these grills that they would sit behind, and they could visit with people, people would come and visit. And there was a man that would, that would come and visit. And she was quite enamored with this man. And there was some flirting going on, I think. And suddenly behind him, 
she has she has this vision of Christ. Christ is standing there and saying, Teresa, you know, don't pay attention to him. Pay attention to me. That's what you need to do. And there, and I imagine this, you know, she's talking to this guy, and then there's Christ standing there, and she's suddenly, you know, looking at him. And that's what I try to imagine with all the people that I'm interacting with. You know, I think, okay, there's master behind, there's Jesus. I think at this time of year, it's, it's wonderful to tune into to Christ in whatever way you can. And that idea that, that Christ consciousness is there behind every single person, not just within us. We have to find that connection within us when we meditate behind every, every single interaction every single thing that we're doing. There's a, um, in the reading, he says to see God as residing in every human being, as indeed he does, is to open oneself to limitless opportunity to serve him. Limitless. There's just, there's no end to it. Just there's limitless opportunities to serve and to just, and to see, to be in that presence of God with others, um, that God is residing in all. And that um, affirmation is interesting. We did this morning the, of the practicality and the, um, I don't remember exactly the words, the hands and the feet are laboring here on earth. So I had this interesting experience once. I have a friend who is a um, heart transplant um, survivor. She carries somebody else's heart <laughs> in her body. And it's, it's a fascinating idea. She's a lovely person and I enjoy um, her company. And it's, but it's an interesting experience and I, I, that she had, that she has shared with me. And, um, and an interesting thought about walking around with somebody else's heart inside it. And, um, and then I, there was a moment I had, I was troubled about something right now. I can't even remember what it was. And within me, sort of as an inner prayer, I was saying just, you know, master, my heart, my heart was hurt. It's just my heart. I just, it's just my heart, you know, master, this is hard. And there was, it wasn't a voice exactly, but there was this very strong feeling. And I think it was related sort of to my experience with my friend. Um, there was this very strong, almost a voice saying, whose heart? No, <laughs> whose heart? It's your heart. And I, I suddenly had this, this realization or this just um, feeling uh, oh, this is not my heart. These are not my hands. These are not my feet. This is not my life. This is God. In, in, um, in one of the recordings, I don't remember which one it is, of uh, Master's Voice, those you know, CDs that we can get from SRF, he says, you have been put on this earth to act this part with an attitude of a divine being, you know, and I can just hear his voice. He said this strong voice with the attitude of a divine being. And this, this sort of epiphany I had of these are not my hands. This is, these are not my feet. This is not my heart. This is not my life. This is God helping God. And that's what I need to remember. That's what I need to do. Um, and in whatever way that means for you, you know, we all have our different paths to walk um, and our own relationship with master. But for me, it's been very helpful to try to remember and to think, what am I doing with this heart? What am I doing with these hands, with these feet? Because this is my part is being a divine being. And, and not claiming these things as my own because they're not. And living in the presence of God is what, is what we're supposed to be doing because that's what we are doing. 
<laughs> we're just not always aware of it, but that's what we are doing. God everywhere, in everywhere, in everything. And I just, I wish that for you for this holiday season, Christmas. This is what we need to focus on, is living in this presence. That's what Christ came to show us, living in this presence of God. Thank you. Those are some of my thoughts. I am happy to talk about anything else or answer questions or whatever you'd like to do. You know what, Mayatri? I'm sorry. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I hear everybody else just fine. I don't know if it's your mic or your position, but I'm just, it's a little, it just sounds really far away. You may not be able to change that, but. Should I change mics, Mark? Uh, let me take a look at something here. It doesn't sound like the mic is on. It sounds like it's being just picked up from other places. Maybe it's so far back. Disconnect. You can grab that other mic. Ah, now I can, now it's on. Now you can hear me? Change. Yeah, now it's okay. better. All right. Well, I it's, was just, just thanking you for that wonderful talk and we're gonna open it now to <clears throat> questions um, and about anything, about the talk, about Ananda Portland, um, nothing personal though no i'm just kidding <laughs> um but i just please, want to answer i want to <laughs> and we will we will um be go i don't know if we got on facebook today did we oh okay well we don't have to go off facebook then um anyway we will uh open we want to invite you to open up your cameras so we have a little more interaction uh if you'd like you can ask your questions on camera and also those that are present there's a mic right there, or you can shout it out and I'll repeat it. Um, or you can put it in, in your chat box, um, in the chat box if you're online. Any questions at all, it's uh, now the satsang portion of our Sunday service satsang. So we will pause for a moment, see if we've got some folks here on from our budding uh, Houston meditation group, I see. So. I don't know what happened to our, is our Austin, any Austin folks on? I thought I saw some earlier. Oh, yeah. But... Yeah, Kim was on earlier. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> it's while, that time. While people are coming up with a question, I'll, uh, I'll ask one. Of course, it's, it's a step when you're the audience to walk up to that mic, but it might be <laughs> fun, whether it's today <laughs> or another time. But uh, my question, uh, Lorna, thank you very much, by the way. I got a lot out of your talk. Um, and uh, was as we are are uh, attaining uh, oneness at all times with the divine, then uh, sometimes I'm thinking that affirmations or even more so visualizations can help. For example, visualizing uh, one of the masters or heavenly father or divine mother um, in our presence. At least during um, no, during our meditation at some point, and that uh, seems like visualization and uh, um, and imagining or remembering, like we can kind of remember a feeling or an experience of beauty, you know, on the ocean or something. We can imagine, uh, uh, for example. Uh, a guru being with us, and then we can also visualize. So trying to come to terms with these three words, like maybe is visualization where the imagine, imagination is not just sort of floating out there, it's actually becoming real by the willingness and the intent to be with the master, that the master is being uh, invited and almost obligated to be with one uh, during meditation. And, and uh, anyway, so what, do you have any thought about visualization 
and how you would uh, perhaps suggest people use that to always be in the presence of God or one of the masters or guru? Well, it's interesting because um, Yogananda used uh, imagination, visualization a lot. I mean, you read whispers and that's all there is. It's all about um, visualizing and using imagery as a way of, of inviting God's presence and reminding ourselves of God's presence. So some people tell me they have a hard time visualizing things. I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I have a very active imagination and, and I have pictures with everything <laughs> that I think about. So I don't know what that means, but you mentioned memories and you mentioned feelings and all too. And I think that sense of, of awakening our awareness of God's presence in whatever way we can. Master and Swami taught visualization to be something that is true. So we're not, you know, there's relaxation where we can visualize being on the beach or I'm in Hawaii now and I can feel the sun on my face and all that. That's, that's nice and it can be relaxing. Um, it can help us calm down. You can, you know, do visualizations of, of, of a lot of different imaginary things. But the purpose of visualization for the devotee and, is, and the use of our imagination and of our memory is all about remembering God. And so whatever you're doing should be based on that truth, should be based on the truth of God's presence and that that's what you're um, awakening it within you. Um, is that true? And Master said that memory should only be used to remember good. You know, that that's what we have to, and it's hard for us because we want to remember the bad stuff and we want to think about that all the time. So we have to remember our memory is to remember the good because source of good is God. And he said, the more we remember the good, the more we remember God. And, and that's, that's why we have memory is to do that. So anyway, everybody has a different way of doing that, but any way we can is definitely a tool that we can use to help bring us closer. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a beautiful answer for me. Thank you, Lorna. You're welcome. Welcome. Hi, I see more people. <laughs> nice to see you. It's so brave of you to turn on your cameras. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. It really helps, Hi. you know. It's okay if other people are in their jammies or something and don't want to turn on their cameras. It's all right. But it's much easier to relate to people than the little boxes, you know, with names. Very nice. Good to see you. Where are you guys? Are you guys in Dallas, Sonia and, and Atul? Is that, the, is that the name? Yeah, we're in Houston. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're in Houston. Houston. Yeah. I get to go to <laughs> Dallas and Houston today. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. So do you guys join in with Dallas every week on Sundays? Do you have a, a just a little meditation group there or is this a special thing today? This is my first time. I don't know about you guys. Do you? Join? Um, I've done some a meditation, the Kriya meditation, but I haven't joined. Um, so this is my first time doing. Well, service. great. Well, welcome. Well, you joined in and you got to be in Portland today too. So. This is Portland. This is it's not much you can see of it. This is part of the um, chapel that we have in our in our community here. That um, because you know we've got Sunday service going on in our sanctuary, everything right now with everybody else. But I'm here in the community. So welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Really, Lorna, I have a question. Is, yes, question. I'm Amy. Hi. Um, hi. And I was just wondering, you know, you're, you're talking about the store as kind of like this little test tube experience. <laughs> yeah. And, mm -hmm. but I also thought about it in terms of the practicality portion of like us and our hands and our feet and like the chant was saying. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk about how, I mean, do you believe that it's able that you can let God flow through you without having to physically be conscious of that, like that we practice this 
breathing and, and everything that we're practicing so that maybe that faith or, you know, those actions can sometimes we can just like flow with the stream of it and not be like, as long as our intention is there, is mm -hmm. it possible to let it go without getting magnetized into the, you know, Maya and all of this stuff <laughs> that's around us? I think it's I think it's a whole spectrum. I think we're all on that spectrum of being completely aware that without God's power and presence, we would not be moving. We wouldn't be doing anything. We wouldn't be here. So it's it's it's, it's divine energy and consciousness that we're operating with. It's why we do the energization exercises is to remember and to be aware and to really focus on the fact that this is divine energy that is animating us. And that's within our whole body and in everything we do. And without that divine energy, we don't do anything. So, but we're, but we're all learning and, and there's times when we're more aware of that than other times. Oh, um, the saints are aware of it all the time. And, and we're, we're trying to get there. So I, whatever helps you do that, is is helpful whatever it does if you've read um frank laubach was a um, missionary christian missionary and he wrote um i want to say was it practicing the presence of god was that right supriya and yes. he talks about being a missionary and his purpose his he decided because he was out there in the wilderness of the um of new guinea i think somewhere and he um, and he decided he was going to just try to be aware of God's presence in every moment. And if you read his writings, it took him it took him years, took him quite a while. He became a, a, a great saint, but he talked about he was typing. You know, <laughs> this was in the 30s, I think it was, or 30s or 40s, and so he had manual typewriter. And he talked about just trying to think of God in his fingers as he was typing. And, and he started with just very basic ideas of, of this is God. God and I are doing this together now. And he gradually took, took him a while of working with it. And he didn't, he, he, I'm sure he had some kind of deep devotional practice, but he didn't have Kriya. He didn't have meditation in the form that we know of it. And he, he gradually got to the place where he felt that presence all the time and he would write about the times when he didn't say today today was pretty good you know I was able to feel God's presence for 20 minutes for an hour for several hours at a time and then I lost it so we all just have to work with it and yes I think it's absolutely possible to get to the point where it's not an effort you're not trying to do it all the time it's just a flow of god's grace and energy flowing through you which is what where swami kriyananda was operating from he was operating on a level of just everything i do is god doing it through me and he didn't have to think about it or work on it anymore he'd gotten to a place of that's just the way it is that's that's just that's what's happening all the time and um we can do that too we just need to keep practicing. <laughs> we need to keep practicing. Does that answer your question? It does. It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course. Yes, Apriya. I want to add to that because it's making me chuckle. <laughs> Being the age I am, which is elderly, I used to use post-it notes ah. to help me. Does anyone remember post-it notes? They were <laughs> only yellow. Now they're all colors and they're wonderful. <laughs> And uh, I still use them. I have some right here. I put on my steering wheel in the middle of it, a post-it note that said, remember God. So every time I got in my car, which was going to the store or going to visit someone, it helped me to remember. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had them on my bathroom mirror for a while and it would say something different. God is yeah. within you or Jai Guru or whatever. And mm -hmm. that's what now I still don't do it 100% of the time, but the percentage is so much more than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. And so I think we all find something use your app. I know people 
do their apps to go off every hour. Remember God, whatever it is, yeah. I don't do that. But, you know, whatever we need to do, if we're serious, yeah. put energy into this divine remembering because Master tells us how important it is. So I'm very grateful still for post-it notes. <laughs> and let me, let me just show you. They come in all colors. Did you know that? <laughs> Now yes, I and you can have you can have virtual electronic post-it notes on your it, on your computer too. Whatever works. <laughs> and thank you, Lorna, for being with us. And this practicing well, the presence of God is, like you say, it's almost sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah, just living, just living that all the time in whatever way you can. Um, Sister Gyanamata said, "Do whatever it takes to to." Um, have that devotion i think she said to burn the candle of devotion in a bright flame whatever it takes yes linda hi hey lorna hi it's been a long time um yeah i was just going to make a comment about the store thing and and one of the ways that i try to take that practice into the store is uh, to make eye contact and it's amazing oh. when you start trying to do it how rarely people do i've noticed where i'll check out and the person has never once looked me in the eye. Yeah. And you kind of have to like, you know, try. But that's <laughs> well. a, yeah. But that's the way that you can experience or that I can experience it is that in that moment of eye contact, you're seeing them, right? And you're and you try to bless them that way and yeah. smile. Uh, and it's amazing yeah. how often they, you know, sort of like get a chart smile back, like, you know, oh wow, hi. And um <laughs> It's just that recognition. So anyway, that's the way that I do it in the store because everybody, otherwise everybody's just sort of rushing around and you're, you know, you can sit there and think about God, but to actually see him there, to me, that's where it happens. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you. That's a very good reminder. Even with masks, you can see people's eyes <laughs> and try to try to connect with them. It's a wonderful I, I can attest to Linda is really good at that because when we go for walks every so often and, you know, we're getting into these in-depth conversations as we're walking and, but she never without fail stops. I mean, she always stops, never passes anybody without giving them a big smile and saying, hi, how are you today? You know, and I'm like always amazed at how conscious she is of everybody that is um, wandering by her and, you know, walking. So, yeah. yes, it's all God. Oh, God's there. That's there. That's, that's I think that's Mallory has a question here now. Hi, Lorna. I was looking forward to oh, looking forward to seeing you today. It's good to see you here. <laughs> you Hi. Good to see you too. <laughs> um my biggest learning curve is customer service people on the phone. <laughs> so if you have yeah. any tips, I if if I remember to pray then I can pause some, you know, but I, I get impatient and, and I have to remember that um, they, you know, for one thing, they might be on a time, they're being timed yeah. and I don't have to give into that, you know, that hurriedness, mm -hmm. but um, they have their own agenda a lot of times, but, but most of them want to be really helpful. It's just my impatience. And so, Praying is the only thing I can. Come up with. <laughs> Praying is always good. Praying is always a good idea, um, and it's it's harder because, as Linda was saying, in the store and in in physical, con we can try to connect through the eyes, and that's you know, Swami would talk about the eyes as you know the the doorway to the soul, and that's how he would he would see people. He would really see you is through your eyes, and um, and when you're on the phone, you can't. There was a time I remember being um, getting, I was in the temple, this was years ago, and I the, uh, the, t the phone kept ringing. And just one call after another, different weird things, and, and then several, um, you know, several spam calls, basically, of people calling. And I reached a level of being kind of impatient. And I, the phone rang again, and I picked up the phone, and I didn't know it but it was uh, a, a devotee and, but I answered it <laughs> like it was one more, you know, one more junk call that I didn't want to answer. And I was just like, you know, 
yes, this, yes, what do you want? I mean, it was just something kind of rude and short, you know, um, wasn't any bad words or anything. It was just, <laughs> and there was this pause. And then he said, Borna, <laughs> what was that? And I just suddenly realized, you know, the consciousness I was projecting. It wasn't just that I was short tempered, but it was not welcoming and not warm and not what I wanted to do. And, um, and so ever since then, I have caution when I answer the phone. If I don't know, you know, my phone now tells me who it is, but if I don't know who it is, I try, try to remember, you don't know who this is, Lorna. <laughs> it could be anybody. It could be God calling. So, you know, respond according. Um, and the other thing is that, um, uh, Swami would talk about relating to people from your center. Um, sometimes he would mention relating from your spiritual eye to their spiritual eye, but also he, he mentioned your center being in your center and relating to them or communicating with them to their center. And you can do that on the phone. Even if you can't see the person, you can think about your center, a, a string or a thread, your center, the, their center, or just, um, you know, the idea of just being in your center. I'm going to be in my center here and not waver. That's where I'm going to be while I'm having this conversation. And, um, and that can help a lot um, because that's where we need to be all the time <laughs> and, and not letting anything, you know, tug you out of that. It, Unfortunately, when we're when we're on the phone with um, we're making a call because there's an issue, there's a problem, problem with our computer, there's a problem with this bill, or the you know we're calling because we want something to be solved. So we have to be careful because our desire for whatever we want have fixed, or we want it to just go away, or we want it to just not be part of our life right now. I don't want to have to deal with this. When anger and frustration is just simmering anger, it's just, you know, it's milder form, but it's, it's anger. Anger is a result of desires not being met. That's what Yogananda tells us. So if you have a desire that this be fixed, or this be correct, or this go away, you got to be real careful because that's not being, that your desire is not being met, then you're going to feel frustrated and angry. So you have to be go back to the source. What's my desire here? And to try to um, try to come at it from a place in your center. Not always easy to do. I understand. Is that helpful at all? Yes. She's shaking her head. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyone else, Sonia? Um, anything? And I saw Ellen peek out for a minute. I don't know if she had a question. Well, yeah, that was so fun that when Asha came for two weekends in a row, first to Austin and then to Dallas, and uh, I'm just so thrilled to see all of our friends from Austin and in Houston. That and must have been a lot of fun. Out. We all hung out, and it was so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. There's Ellen. She's coming on. <laughs> You're still muted, though. I said just for a second to say hi. Lorna, it's always so wonderful to have you here. Yeah. It's Thank good you. to see everybody. A tool. It's great that you're here. I'm so glad to see you here. I'm Ellen from the Texas Yoga Retreat. I met you there, and your friend, I guess it's Amy. Welcome. Yes. Nice to see you. You too. <laughs> I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say hi for one second. Well, thank, thank you Helen. for doing that. I appreciate it. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Helen. So how about just share a little bit about the Portland community and, and going on there? It would be nice to just catch up with our guru buys there. What's happening? We are like everybody else. We're, you know, it seems like a continual transition to we don't know what, you know, from where we were to what's happening next. So, you know, we're, we're transitioning, more people are coming back to the temple to be in person. 
we are streaming our services too. So we still, and that's just going to be a reality, of course, from now on is that we'll have people who are um, watching online and people who are there in person. What's really fun, as you guys are talking about your connections there, is that our world has, you know, grown. So in a lot of our online things, we have devotees from that are not local. We have people from the East Coast, from Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and all that are coming to our book study. And we have we have people that are all around. And that's, I think, I find that wonderful. Um, it's it's just expands our world and makes us realize that Ananda is a worldwide work, you know? So I find that really fun. We're, um, as I said, here in the community, we have a we have a community, for those of you who don't know, we have a, an apartment complex community of 50 apartments. Um, a lot of those people are Ananda people that live here, not every single one of them, but it's it's a lovely, it's a wonderful place. And then we have our temple sanctuary teach teaching center, we call it. And we're we're back to just doing a couple yoga classes there a week. And um, we're starting to have a little bit more activity. We had World Brotherhood Day and we had a um, you know, international treats and all afterwards where people gathered. So we're starting to do a few of those things. We're still, we still got some COVID here. People are coming down with COVID and the flu and all people, a lot of people getting sick these days. So um, I wear my mask a lot because I don't want to breathe in anything that, that is floating around out there. Um, we're having also, what's exciting is that we're starting to have families again. We, we reached a period where our crop of children that lived here in the community grew up. They're all like high school and going to college. And so we didn't have children here. And now we have a few new families with young children and we are doing Sunday school once a week, which is, I mean, once a month, of course it's once a week, once a month, um, which is, I find as a, as the director here, I find that just really thrilling because it's a new, it's a new wave of energy that, we really need, you know, it's good to have families and young people. And, um, and that's really fun. So it's, it just looks a lot more um, hopeful for the new year when we have families and kids and squealing children. We had a kirtan the other night and there were children laughing and, you know, making joyful noises as children do. And it was just, just warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mark, I don't know if you heard that, but Mark's no. question is, what, what are the book studies that you are doing? We've been doing the essence of the Bhagavad Gita for, I think, almost all year. We're just wrapping that up. And they're talking about doing the new, the new wisdom book, the um, how to cope with change book next. I'm not sure if that's decided or not. Surrender of uh, leads those. Um, and that's been, that's been fun. That's just an hour or so of, you know, having that wonderful to be able to be in the Gita for that long. I just, I want to do more of it. It still feels like, even though we've been doing it for about a year, it feels like we're skimming over the top, you know, and I'll say, no, wait, slow down. Did you read that? It's amazing what he said here. Do you know what that means? And it's just, it's inspired me to do more reading and more diving into that you know we we have um we we, we have a couple of discussion groups here uh we have treasures along the path which mike is the host of and uh we take a, a talk of swamis each week or every couple of weeks or so and that's the same same kind of thing it's just so enriching you just yeah can't get enough and and then we have um Holy Science, which is a, a, a real tough yeah. read, but it's a great discussion that uh, we're doing. And that's uh, been once a month. The uh, Treasures is every week on Tuesdays um, and, and whatnot. But you also have, um, don't you have Shanti uh, doing uh, an emotional healing, uh, something yes. along those lines? She offered to do that for us uh, quite a while ago. And so once a month, um, she had this series in Palo Alto, just using the little secrets books. For those of you who are newer, maybe you're not mm. familiar with them, but there are these little books that were put out back in the 90s, I think, um, Secret of Happiness, Secret of, and 
there's one on emotional healing. And so it's a book meant to be used like for the month. So it has a little affirmation or aphorism, um, 30 of them for the month. So that's a lot if you're doing it just once a month. So that's 30 months that you would have that you would go over those. So she had done the series in Palo Alto and she offered to do it for us. So once a month we have a class and, and really what we're doing is we're, we're actually watching the class that she had done before on that topic where she talks about it. And then we have a live Q and a like this, where we, we go into it more deeply. And that's been fun. It's, um, it's really, it's really good, you know, stuff. It's good teachings, things to explore, but it also, like I said, it's really nice to connect with our guru bhais that aren't here, you know, to have a regular, um, opportunity to be with Shanti online is wonderful. And we also are, um, we've been struggling because we haven't offered Raja yoga. You guys have been amazing with continuing <laughs> to offer the Raja yoga class. And, and we had a, had a real problem because not just COVID, but prior to that, we went through a big shakeup here in Portland and changed in leadership and different people. And um, we just, we haven't done it for several years. And so I kept thinking, how are we going to do this? We've, we've got people who really need to take Raja yoga. And um, we made an arrangement with Cremon um, and Ananda Seattle. They came down for a weekend and, you know, and did a service and all. And he said, how about you guys do it with us? So in January, they are offering a course with um, Murley, who is the, their yoga instructor and extraordinaire and teacher light bearer. For those of you who don't know Murley, he, um, he's an Indian man um, that has been teaching there in Seattle, part of the Seattle Sangha for quite a few years and go online and listen to his stories and any of his services. He's a wonderful teacher and he, he has a PhD and he's knows, he knows the Indian scriptures by heart and can quote them. And he does his talks and he, and he um, will tell you the whole you know, passage in Sanskrit and then interpret it for you. He's, he's wonderful. Anyway, he, they're doing a art and science, um, you know, online and in person. So they'll have it up there in, in Seattle and offered us the ability to coordinate with them. So now our people are going to be able to take that course and it'll be on Zoom, it'll be virtual for us. And then we'll try to, sometime during the course, we're gonna take a field trip and go up to Seattle and, and have a class together with the people up there. Um, but it's, it's wonderful, it solved our problem of having the resources because we just don't have the resources to offer Raja. And it, it's a, another connection with uh, Ananda Seattle and the Guru Bhais there. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. That's wonderful. I think we, we started this before the pandemic of, uh, you know, e expanding our, our, our reach and connection outside of just Texas with you, Lorna, because oh, you were yeah. our web, web designer, and that was a unique situation. I don't think that it happened. So it, we planted that seed. That, That's uh, true. Because <laughs> I already did. For years you did, you did that, and... and um, but anyway, yeah, it really is wonderful. And I just want to clarify one thing, and then I think we'll ask last time if anybody has any other questions. But um, with those discussion groups, people can join in at any time, right? That's how we do it here, and I'm assuming that's how you do it there. Yeah. 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 There's there, um, Yes. We, some of them, um, you know, you have to get the link. We, we still don't usually um, just publish the, like, the Zoom links out there. Um, we'll say on our website, you know, you can contact Lorna by an email and say, can I have the link to this one and, um, and be a part of it. But yes, yes. Okay. Like Great. Shanti's emotional healing thing. That's something that you can jump into. It's not, it's not necessary to have done it from the very beginning. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So any other questions out there or even here? Um, we'll pause for just a moment see if anybody else has something they'd like to chime in about. 
Everybody's good? Is that long enough pause? (laughs) Okay, so I think do now is we'll sign off. We'll ask everybody's uh, blessings on Lorna with our traditional Ananda, Texas uh, goodbye, which is Namaste, Namaste, (laughs) y'all. Thank you so much. And uh, please give our love to all our guru buys in Portland and one of yeah. these days, I know Mark and I will get up there and see you again. And I may call you sooner than you know. Call me. Call me. <laughs> to connect again. Yeah. So, thank, you. To oh, thank you. Hi, yeah. Sonia. Thank you. Hi, Sonia. Tool, you. Amy. Thank you. Supriya, everybody. Everybody Great that I see you all. Thank you. It's been Blessings. a lovely morning. Merry Christmas to everybody, too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.